scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are two pillars as far as kingdom advancement is concerned. Number one is called evangelism. Number two is called influence. If you have evangelism alone, Christ will be enthroned in the hearts of men. But the territory will still be a place of decadence, like it was in Sodom and Gomorrah. Lot was not a compromised man, but Sodom and Gomorrah was influenced by a spirit that was not of God, and he still suffered the consequence. So it is not enough to be saved personally. Your territory must become safe too, S-A-F-E. And the tool that frontiers the kingdom, territorially speaking, is influence so you can make a territory to buy into the ideologies of the kingdom not by using force or cruelty your dressing today was a product of someone's influence you saw someone this is this is the whole idea behind advertisement they will never carry a failure to advertise a product because it is the intention is to get people to patronize that product and they are willing to spend millions of naira and dollars for someone who has results to now wear the product or whatever it is and that becomes you will be surprised the kind of sales that will come to that organization simply because someone of influence wore a product hallelujah the songs we sing the way we build the way we dress the way we live the way we talk are largely products of external influences and some of them we've not even met them there i don't watch football i used to watch and play football years ago but i had to sacrifice it for many other things praise god there are people called fans or fans of and and sometimes you pass a group of people who are arguing about football clubs and the zeal that these guys have you will be shocked and surprised and it looks as though they were in the same room with the footballers i saw him i know what i saw that level of certainty and they can dress like the footballers have you seen people clamor over the used shirts of footballers they call it original it doesn't matter how sweaty it is the fact that this man wore it and threw it and i held it they can sell that shirt for a million dollars that is the power of influence there are many people who used to behave well until they met an environment that began to plant in a wrong seed the first example of influence in the bible i don't have the time but the first example of influence in the bible was between the serpent and eve <laughs> the bible says when god created man and woman he gave them instructions that you can eat of the tree uh, everywhere but that which is in the middle of the garden you should not touch and then the bible tells us that the serpent was more subtle that's how it starts that the serpent was more subtle than all the beasts of the field that the Lord had created and that he came to Eve we don't know how many times he kept coming to propose but he came with a proposal and said did God really say that in the day you eat of that fruit you will die 
he said certainly god said so he said let me tell you something you don't know god is insecure he's hiding something from you he knows that the day you eat of that tree you will become like god knowing good and evil then the bible says when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it could make one wise she ate and gave her husband who was there with them with her then the bible says their eyes were open influence there is no record of the serpent using a sword there is no record of the serpent tying down and say you must eat of this influence is very powerful you can make men do things say things and be things even without physical contact with them it then means that if we are to take over we must understand the spiritual technology that exalts us to a position where we can influence the mindset the thinking of a generation to become pro-christ evangelism is the first step but it does not stop there in addition to evangelism like we saw yesterday there are many people who will run to jesus because someone they love and admire ran to jesus there are many people who will run away from jesus because someone they admire said jesus was unnecessary every time i teach on influence i would always like to state this imagine if um just for for discussion michael jackson ever shouted jesus christ is lord even if it was a mistake he will win more souls than many crusades combined just for using his influence he's been dead many years and still their records still sell today more than many businesses that have been laboring even in prayer that is the power of influence are we together the late dr miles monroe would say the world is still being ruled by dead men the ideas of dead men is still what has kept living people trapped till today the philosophies that came whether governmental philosophies all kinds of ideas nations today ha, have been impoverished because of ideas that came from people that are long gone hallelujah i visited south africa many times and every time i'm there i'm amazed at the legacy that the late nelson mandela left for the people he so influenced that nation to a point that respectfully speaking it, it was almost as though if he were to be put in a class that is not human it would be better for you to offend someone than to touch and tamper with the legacies of nelson mandela i remember one time i was told that when south africa were trying to lobby I think to host the world cup or something like that there was all kinds of confusion and mandela was sent to go to the place of the negotiation as soon as he stepped there they all got up greeted him and that was the end of discussion can you imagine that influence it is god's desire that you get to a place where your appearance is like the manifestation of god to, i'm not talking of human worship but that your life is so compelling you can make people to drop bad habits in a moment something about the dexterity of your life the quality of your carriage will compel people to begin to make noble decisions that just by the mere look at you many people begin to correct and reorder many things about their lives if you're with me say amen, amen. influence now kingdom influence very quickly is built on four pillars kingdom influence is built on four pillars or kingdom leadership if you want to use that expression kingdom leadership is built on four pillars you cannot be said to be a leader in the kingdom until your leadership is built on these four pillars are you ready now number one the first pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built on is called genuine love for God and men genuine love for God and men kingdom leadership is built upon this pillar 
genuine love for God and men. Let's look at a few scriptures very quickly. Matthew 22 from verse 36. Matthew 22 from verse 36. We are reading to 40. Let's walk together media so we can hurry up. Matthew 22 from verse 36 to 40. They asked Jesus and they said, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus responded by saying, 37, we're reading down to 40. Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all your heart. Is that in your Bible? With all your soul and with all your mind. 38. He says, this is the first and great commandment. Next verse. The second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And then it says, on these two hang the entire law and prophets. You know what that meant? That the very purpose behind giving all those laws was at an attempt to help you keep these two things. So every single law that was given in the Old Testament was a laborious attempt to bring you to a point where you love God and you love men. So in loving God and loving men, you have fulfilled the law. Are we together? That on these two hangs the law and the prophet. John chapter 10, please. From verse 11 to 13. John chapter 10 from verse 11 to 13. Jesus was speaking about kingdom leadership. And here's what he had to say. I am the good shepherd. He says the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. Is that in your Bible? He says, but he that is a hireling and is not a shepherd, whose own the sheep are not, he seeth the wolf coming and leaveth the sheep and fleeth, and the wolf catcheth them and scattereth the sheep. 13. He says the hireling fleeth because he is a hireling and cared not for the sheep this is true for ministry is true for business is true for government that kingdom leadership at any level whether politically in the area of faith and ministry like we know in corporate life the moment you are talking about leadership from a kingdom standpoint it is predicated upon number one your love for God and your love for people. Please look up. If you do not love people and you claim you love God, the Bible says you are a hypocrite. It says, how can you say you love God that you have not seen when you hate your brother? There are many preachers, respectfully speaking, that do not love the people they lead. There are many, many, many leaders, heads of government across nations, you need to see how politicians and business people discuss at the negotiation table. The interests of the people they lead is not there whatsoever. What is in need for me has become the language of leadership in our world. And that must change. This is why summits like this have been put in place. The Bible talks about weak men who came to David in the cave of Adullam. Men who were in debt, men who were distressed, they were weak people. And David with compassion turned those people to become the mighty men of David. You cannot be a true leader if you do not love Jesus and you do not love people. Let me tell you. One of the greatest secrets behind the grace of God upon my life is not just fasting and prayer and study of the word alone. These things are very important and foundational. But I can tell you sincerely, I love God and I love people. Your Bible says, for God so loved the world, the world of men. For God so loved the world. Jesus stood and looked at the people. There are two reasons, two times Jesus wept in the Bible. The first time he wept was in John chapter 11 from verse 35. He was at the grave of Lazarus. And the Bible says Jesus wept. And seeing him weep, they commented and they said, oh, how he loved him. The second time Jesus would weep, he stood over Jerusalem. And the Bible says he wept and said, oh, Jerusalem, if only you had known. 
even in this your time the things that pertain unto your peace it says but now they are hidden from you compassion many times the bible would tell you that jesus had compassion upon them the anointing that flowed from his life flowed through the gauge of compassion you must pray this morning and ask god for grace to be a compassionate person being a disciplined leader being a strict leader is not the same as being a wicked leader discipline is not the same thing as wickedness are we together there are many people in a in a bid to show that they are strict principled and disciplined they swing to the other side of the pendulum and what you see happen is pure wickedness there has to be a level of thoughtfulness and empathy that was what made the father to send jesus to us for god so loved the world that he gave hallelujah you want to become a kingdom leader that god will grant the grace to take over for his glory you must love god and you must love people you must love god you must love the people in your place of work especially those that god has brought as subordinates don't use people love people genuinely preachers we need to be careful this temptation of using people either for personal gains using people to manipulate them it is something that we must run away from there is a narrative that is being sold across the body of christ where you take advantage of the honor that people have for you and manipulate them into all kinds of things that must be avoided do not emulate those things in a bit listen carefully listen carefully if it is kingdom leadership you are interested in expressing can i tell you people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care let me repeat myself people do not care how much you know until they know how much you care and love is discernible you can discern genuine love there is a way you can rebuke a church member rebuke a fellow staff even though the rebuke is harsh they can see the genuineness and the purity of the love from whence the rebuke is coming from that is what makes them to receive it even though painful for instance the Bible says, he that the father loves, he chastises. So that chastisement is not coming from a standpoint of wickedness. There are many parents today who are being hated by their children because their disciplinary actions when the children were small did not come from a standpoint of love. It came from a standpoint of anger and hatred. And there is a difference. Kingdom leadership is predicated on love hear me let me put a balance very quickly love is not the same thing as carelessness to allow things go wrong there are many parents for instance who have refused to discipline and train their children properly because they feel that anything that puts a measure of strictness on the children is compromising uh, uh, their perception of love no 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 you must love people enough to want them to rise you must love people enough to look beyond your reputation and see that what they need to learn they learn no matter how uncomfortable it is there are many uncomfortable messages for instance the one you heard before i just came while i was listening to the man say this i said wow this man has a lot of grace to be able to teach this because most times when you are teaching the truthfulness that is around giving people just frown at you and it looks like you are and i saw the confidence with which he was teaching and i said truly this man loves these people many people will consider their reputation above and beyond this is someone learning the question i have for you is who have you loved enough to see him saved or her saved who have you loved enough parents have you loved your children enough to look beyond yourself and consider their well-being there are many parents who can go around wearing clothes that are five times the school fees of a very good school for the child and send their children to schools that they don't they are not even learning anything 
true leadership please hear me is predicated on genuineness of love I love my people I love God's people I love the generation that God has sent me to I'm not just trying to be I'm not looking for I'm, in fact I'm not interested in celebrity lifestyle you know when people clap for me as I come sometimes there's nothing you can do about it but believe me my passion is not to be celebrated at the end of my life my desire and that which I desire to be accredited to me is the testimony of Enoch that I love God with all my heart and I gave my best to inspire a generation to love Jesus that's it show us the ancient path will you lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the ways of Jesus we want to enter your rest will you show us the ancient path and lead us along eternal highway we want to follow the footsteps of Jesus we want to enter your rest hear me everything that you do in the kingdom if you must be a visionary leader that god will trust with influence especially in this end time you must love people genuinely and love god genuinely just reduce this a little and let me say something please look up you know most times when people see me the first thing they want is prayer for impartation of anointing and then other people say what have you done that makes a generation to love you so much and to listen to you and I tell them you have to look beyond the teachings you have to look beyond the miracles you have to look beyond you cannot you cannot stage manage global influence no it is a product of genuine love for God did it not say in your Bible and I if I be lifted up from the earth I will draw all men now watch this watch this when you love Jesus you will be more than willing to decrease so that he will increase he never said to diminish he only said to decrease I always give an example with this stage look at this beautiful pulpit do you know the center of focus is the top of the pulpit is that true that is where I am resting my Bible but it's impossible to look at this and not look at what is carrying it that is how influence is. if your your life is about projecting and revealing Jesus the focus becomes Jesus but there will always be a space for a generation to see the one who lifts him we saw both Jesus and the cross that carried him two of them today we respect the one that died and we also respect the cross that carried the one that died the reason why the world cannot look at you is because you are about building your own empire using men you are about proving a point to everybody that i'm not a failure using men it may be a sincere desire but i'm teaching you superior kingdom leadership that foundation number one is a sincere desire to see Jesus lifted and a sincere desire to love his people number two for sake of time is God giving somebody a new orientation the second pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built is called character please write it down character there's no such thing as good or bad character there's character or not character is always positive good habit or bad habit but you must become a person of character you may have heard people say the anointing will take you up but it's character that retains you there yes character is very important in Galatians chapter 5 when you read from verse 16 to 22 we're not reading just write for reference Galatians 5 16 to 22 talks about the works of the flesh and then when we get to verse 22 it talks about what we know to be the fruit of the spirit the fruits that should be resident in the recreated human spirit and the bible lists nine of them and there are all kinds of um, 
theological explanations others see them as expressions of love or nine distinct fruit of the spirit the most important thing is that these are the spiritual qualities verse 22 that define a person of character you are a person of character to the degree to which the fruit of the spirit is lavishly at work in you are we together give it to us please 22 but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace patience or long suffering gentleness goodness faith meekness self-control or temperance he say against such there is no law that means there is no law on earth that means well for men that fights whoever has this attribute whether it is christianity or any other religion nobody will ever frown at a man do you know everything we do in life is an attempt to replicate this atmosphere in our lives you get dogs because you are looking for peace is that true you get a security man because you suspect as much as you came to church you still locked your car outside why because you suspect that not all men have faith you are looking for a you are trying to simulate the atmosphere of the fruit of the spirit when you are vetting employers in your place of work beyond skill why do you throw some and pick some you are looking for the semblance of the fruit of the spirit at work in them someone say character in first timothy chapter 3 when you read from verse 1 to 9 first timothy chapter 3 from verse 1 to 9 apostle paul was mentoring his son in the gospel timothy and he was guiding him to understand the ethics of effective ministry as far as the ministry of an overseer or a pastor were concerned and he began to list a group of things that he would need to watch for are we together now yes character is not necessarily perfection but you see you are a person of character to the degree to which there is a level of dexterity in your life when you are a person who is easily given to compromise you are not a person of character compromise in words compromise in deeds you must be a person of value and values even if you are wrong let it be that you are definite about something it is easy to be corrected it's easy to correct somebody who is definitely wrong than someone who vacillates between good and bad that was why it was difficult for jesus to correct the scribes and the pharisees when he met the the woman at the well she was completely wrong and he, he she switched immediately when he met a man who was possessed of devils it was pure darkness light could come immediately but when he met people who, who were in his crusades they would come early and sit inside but never be open for conversion hallelujah character this i believe is one of the attributes that we need to pray seriously especially for this generation to have we're a generation that clamors for power revelation miracles and that is wonderful and it seems especially in the area of ministry that the moment you have access to revelation you have access to some level of results it does not matter what else happens no it does it does it does someone say character number three the third pillar upon which kingdom leadership is built on is called competence please write it down competence number one your love for god and for men number two character moral excellence the quality of being a person of moral high moral standards and then number three competence proverbs 18 16 the gift of a man makes room for him the bible says and bringeth him before great men the gift of a man you change that word gift to the value of a man that it is able to make room you know what it means to make room to make room does not mean to show him where there is an empty room there is no empty room for you anywhere it is your gift that will push a space 
and give you a place in life and destiny there are no empty lands not even in the bible there are giants in every land even if it is your own it will take something from you to dislodge this place and create a place for yourself please hear me believers if we do not press for competence remember my introductory explanation about leadership that is about deploying the gift and the ability that you have this is where i need to charge the body of christ respectfully um with every sense of gravity and importance because we have used spirituality as an excuse for mediocrity and incompetence it is only in the church that incompetence is tolerated indefinitely under the guise that the most important thing is god or the grace of god so we ship every kind of incompetence now the gift of a man not the gift of a christian the gift of a man any man makes room for him bringing him before great men i made up my mind as a man of god that the only advantage in my life will not be the anointing i should be able to communicate with non-christians in an intelligent way exporting kingdom values within a context that can lead to transformation even national transformation if you're a man of God here, let me charge you and encourage you. The pulpit is your constituency, but not your only point of influence. If you can only be heard by Christians, you are not, you are not really valuable. If your audience are only Christians, you are not valuable. A Muslim should be able to listen to you. And even though he may not accept your Jesus, he cannot deny the dexterity of your thoughts, the applicability of the principles that you are bringing. This is what will give you an upper hand. Are we learning? Yes, the Bible says, buy the truth and sell it not. Believers, in the name of Jesus, let the spirit of laziness live our lives forever. <laughs> You are a man of God here. Obtain grace from God and go and do your homework. Let's stop bringing shame and reproach to God through incompetence. No. Be sound in doctrine. Walk upon yourself. Communicate the truth with intelligence. Let people be able to listen to you and let their staying under your influence be worth their time. Let people not frown while they are listening to you and say, I wasted my time. I would have been sleeping instead of coming to... You are not given, given life applicable truths. This is also true for a CEO. When you classically speaking there are different levels of leadership you see the list of them that we know professionally speaking is positional leadership that means the loyalty of the people to you is simply because they appointed you there they really don't like you they don't love you they are not loyal to you it's just because they have to make do with that appointment you must transit through knowledge people should love you for who you are beyond the office you occupy is the reason why we are obsessed about offices i am apostle joshua selman because once you remove that apostle joshua selman has no value among people no shouldn't be when you say jesus when you say messiah when you say christ any of his names carry value is someone learning make up your mind to be competent as a businessman make up your mind to be competent beyond being rich make up your mind to be competent in genesis chapter 41 i wish we had time the full text is from 33 to 46. this was joseph being called out of the dungeon by pharaoh remember pharaoh had a dream and his sorcerers magicians could not interpret the dream and they called this young hebrew boy called joseph joseph shaves and stands before pharaoh pharaoh now narrates the dream and joseph says well god will give pharaoh an understanding of peace then he begins his interpretation when he interprets it now i hope you know that joseph was not lifted for interpreting the dream 
he was lifted for bringing solutions out of the dream he said now let pharaoh set this and that and 20 percent of the grains the agricultural products in egypt let it be stored and saved for the next seven years and then put people over that affairs let's look at verse 38 for sake of verse 40 verse 40 just for the sake of time verse 40 please give it to us um okay let, let me let's 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 see 38 wherever we stop i need you to see the context of this genesis 41 38 and pharaoh said unto his servants can we find such a man as this this is a king testifying this is what competence does do you know that when you are really competent it will veto where you are coming from when people begin to say where are you from is because there is there is there is a level of incompetence that makes it necessary to find out where you are coming from there is a level of value that can veto your background you are too important to be ignored watch this now can we find such a one in whom is the spirit of god next verse and pharaoh said unto joseph for as much as god has showed you all this there is none so discreet and wise as that out as a result thou shalt be over my house no election no interview no discussion kings were not stupid people do you know the risk it takes to carry a Jewish boy from the prison with no training? The question is, who will train him? When the king now said, I gave all of you a level playing ground, whoever has answers, come forth, and nobody could bring it. Thou shalt be over my house. Please give it to us. And according to thy word shall my people be ruled. What a risk only in the throne will i be greater than you next verse look at the free things that began to come to him and pharaoh said unto joseph see i have set thee over all the land of egypt favor answering to competence and pharaoh took off his ring from his hand and put it on joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck can you imagine a man leaves the prison in the morning and says, I'm coming. The pre I'm sure the prison warder said, make sure you return later. And the boy smiled and said, you do not know who is leaving that prison. I can imagine the man who was shaving Joseph to go and meet Pharaoh. Oh dear. Never do look down on a competent man, even if you find him in prison. Prison is a deceptive place. It's a place where both good and bad people meet. So be careful when you, who you treat in the prison because you don't know who is leaving that place. Some will live to their death, but some will live to their rising. The prison is a mysterious place where you find both good and bad people. The prison, like the cross, is a mysterious place. You will find Jesus on the cross. You will also find thieves on the cross don't generalize when you see everybody in prison or the cross i'm speaking to you prophetically because there are people right now it looks like there are no results in their lives yet they are in the prison could it be that some of them are 48 hours left to rise like joseph is god giving you wisdom let's finish that scripture media please give it to us let's walk very quickly so we can finish and the bible says and he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had and they cried before him bowed the knee and made him the ruler over all the land of egypt let's just finish it and pharaoh said unto joseph i am pharaoh and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in the land of egypt are you seeing that many things we pray for were assigned to come to us through competence and he gave him a name called zafnath paniah and his and he gave him 
to wife Asena, the daughter of Potipharah, the priest of On. And Joseph went out over the land of Egypt, the last verse. And he was 30 years old. This is the part that disturbs me. He was how old? I hope you know that Egypt, the then Egypt, was bigger than Africa. Don't think it's just a small thing you see on the map today. Egypt was a world superpower as at that time. How do you make a 30 year old boy without interview who had spent X years plus two extra years as a result of the carelessness of a wine presser? I will hold on through the storm and I will hold on to your word my life will soon reveal you're the lifter of men lifter of men I will hold on through the storm yes I will hold on to your word my story is about to change by the lifter of men the lifter of men hear me if you ever doubt that God lifts men think again while they were driving me into this city I was almost in tears because I remember walking on some of your roads many years ago quietly thinking about my destiny and declaring that I will not be small maybe i pass some of you who knows but no more <laughs> if you are trying to do a tour of portacot for me you may be wasting your time this is not a place of ignorance there was a time it was once home but you may never know that's exactly what happens when you do not rise you will remain an activity that passes with time listen to me I want somebody to make a covenant with his destiny today that incompetence must live my life must live my life apostle I can cook can kings call you to cook for them listen you only stop in your journey to competence when you get to the palace if you are not yet in the palace don't flatter yourself keep moving keep moving apostle i'm a man of god until the day that the nations call you and acknowledge jesus risen in your life don't stop i'm a businessman i'm a ceo with how much I have hundred million in there. Can you give it to the work of God and, and sleep sound? If you cannot, you are not yet there. Don't say I'm a rich man. There's a lot of early arrival mentality that is killing so many people. And I say this with a heart of love. Many times people look at me and say, Apostle, what are you studying again? What are you praying again? I'm almost tempted to say, get thee behind me, Satan compared to where he's taking us we are just a step out of the cave until we bring nations to the cross in one day we are not yet there i told you be careful who claps for you some of you too many mediocres have clapped for you too early for doing nothing and it has put you in a position where you are comparing yourself with people who have not even started anything no sir is god speaking to someone We'll find somewhere to pray but listen to me you want to be a leader indeed nobody will follow an incompetent person pastor members will not come because you invited them they will come because they are comfortable sitting under the leadership of an intelligent spiritual composed disciplined enlightened pastor that adds value perpetually to them a wealthy man will not leave his house and make a fool of himself and come and sit down under your atmosphere 
for three four hours wasting his time listening to disjointed irrelevant information that is an insult to his pedigree no there is a kind of light that brings kings the bible says gentiles will come to your light but kings don't come to your light they come to the brightness of your rising listen music directors musicians don't say i can sing who has vetted you thank god for the song you wrote thank god for all the mistakes you are learning provided you keep pressing don't become unnecessarily impressed with yourself there are times to pat yourself at the back i once met a group of people business people and you know most times business people think men of god have nothing to tell them so i sat down and i listened to the people they were talking very arrogantly and when they were i was almost saying please i have the, the important things to do these people are wasting my time here disjointed gaps in their understanding and i said how do these people expect to make it just because somebody gave you a large money to start business doesn't mean you are there the five talent was given so you are not marked for what you are given you are marked for what you made from what you were given that you had a father that could give you 100 million thank god for the leverage we start marking from what is added to it not what is given are we together please challenge yourself in the name of jesus i hope you are not offended i'm stretching you to go back some of you from this place right now go to a bookstore straight and say i am tired of failing love everybody but follow people with results don't waste your time shorten your journey by gathering information you don't have to throw out again through incompetence i love everybody but i do not give my destiny attention to everybody the urgency in my destiny does not allow me to keep editing garbages i put in my mind and only to find out that what i call light was darkness so there are some them the bible says to follow who through faith and patience have obtained not are obtaining hallelujah is someone learning say after me in the name of jesus from today i obtain grace to be competent say in the name of jesus my world will see the glory of god that rises from within me amen God has called you to be the prof a prophet over the nations. Stay with God. Do your homework. Let something from heaven come upon your life. And when you stand up, competition is only necessary to people who are at a level, an average level. You see, you don't queue in the air. You only have traffic on the ground. The difficulty of the plane is until it lifts because there can be traffic but once it lifts no matter how big it is the plane is there is enough space in the air so a competitive mentality is already an indication that you are surrounding yourself around a sphere with too many mediocres. i will soar with you above the clouds father you are king over the floods and i will be still and know you are god my soul be still and know you are god let me give you the last key and we'll pray has god spoken to someone I challenged myself years ago and I still do that I will never settle you see champions never even know where the finish line is their focus is not to finish their focus is to remain a champion will pass the finish line and still be looking this one thing I do he says forgetting the things that are behind I press this was the greatest one of the greatest apostles wrote to third of the new testament 
and yet at the end of his life he still continued to advocate his press hallelujah let's do a quick recap number one the first pillar upon which kingdom leadership rests on is your love for God and for people did you get that yes. number two is character number three competence now number four service the last pillar upon which kingdom leadership rests on is service Luke 22 please from verse 25 we're reading down to 27 Jesus was contrasting the world's way of leadership as opposed to the kingdom's way let's hear what he had to say and he said unto them the king of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them and they that exercise authority over them are called benefactors he said but ye shall not be so but he that is greatest among you must prove his greatness by being as the younger and he that is chief as he that doth serve for whether is greater he that seated at meat or he that serveth is it not he that seated at the meal he said but i am among you jesus is speaking not as one that rules even though i am lord but as far as leadership is concerned i am among you as he that serveth can i tell you this the purpose of authority is service if you cannot serve with the influence and the authority that god gives you then you are not relevant as far as his program is concerned the temptation is there to use your influence to subjugate people the temptation is there to use your influence to make a name for yourself but i have discovered from scripture from history from fathers and from my experience that the greatest way to have a name if you ever need one a name that counts is to serve service is powerful i have profound regard and respect for people who serve me elisha was never supposed to be a prophet there was no prophecy about elisha taking over from elijah the next prophet should come from among the sons of the prophet who were being mentored in the school but one person served his way and rewrote prophecy until he carried a double portion can i tell you this as i prepare to wrap up some of you have served laboriously and diligently in this church and the devil is about to tempt you to make you believe that your service is making you too weak can i tell you the way up is through service when you find people who serve i show you people who will never remain at that same position the justice system of god will not allow you to remain at that same position in fact run away from a leader who does not have a track record of service authentic leadership comes as a reward for effective service my life is full of stories at strategic points in my life how that i served and sometimes served to a fault uh, you know you may have heard me say that there is nobody who comes out of nowhere that narrative is absolute nonsense just because you are not aware of where david came out from does not mean he was not in the wilderness behind every story i tell you every glory they say is a story you are rewriting your story and you are writing your story now write it with honor even in if in tears write it with honor because someday what looks like a scar in your hand will become the symbol of honor the hymn writer says so i cherish the old rugged cross Till my burdens at last I lay down. I will cling to the old rugged cross.
here's the part I love. And exchange it something for a crown. So what is making you cry today is currency. You will soon exchange it for honor tomorrow. A day will come, a clarion call will be made at the table of greatness. But a certain scar requirement will be the qualification to be seated there. And if you do not have that scar through service, you cannot be given room among the great. Today when you go to heaven, you don't just use crowns to know Jesus because the elders too have crowns. All you need to do is tell everybody in heaven to lift up their hands. The one who has what was once a symbol of shame. The one who bled. The same hand that once brought shame is the hand today that holds the scepter of honor. I don't know who I'm speaking to, but your service is giving you permission to levels you are not even ready. Young lady, many people are looking at you and saying leave these church people you will serve church and die here for nothing you better resist the temptation of satan to abort a glorious destiny that is still in formation nothing is excellent while it is still forming as women who cook when you look at the pot ask our wonderful women here mothers and wives when you are in the kitchen sometimes it looks messy and yet that is what we are waiting for to eat when you see the food while it's there you are cutting you are doing this the same meat you salivate over if you see it in a raw form you may not eat it again just because god is making you don't allow naysayers and ignorant people to abort something that is still in process anybody who sees you and say you don't look like it say god is still working Ah, la is still working where is the husband you said you will get for serving in church you better use common sense tell them god is still working after working for many years it will be an insult for god to just give you a man god will give you a nation in a man believe me help them please i know what i'm saying My life is a testimony god does not pay people every day but the day your reward comes ah he will carry a man's lifetime and give you in a moment hallelujah eh. hallelujah eh. hallelujah the Bible says which walketh in us a far more exceeding weight of glory listen to me it says while we look not at the things that are seen but the things that are unseen he said for the things that are seen are temporal that means subject to change but the things that are unseen are eternal the version of you now is not the version the world is waiting for be patient with God let him build you to be a man of God with fire a woman of God with power an exceptional CEO please hear me a day will come do you know many of the houses you have passed in this city are your own not just the listen but it's not this version of you they are looking for there is a version of you that will evolve you will buy those houses like you are buying recharge card and it will not even be a testimony because you have risen far beyond that realm If you had seen my life say maybe 20 years ago it may not look like it now the only thing that you may see that represents hope is vision not results vision 
for someone you came here and there are all kinds i'm saying this particularly to our dear young people we have a generation that is too impatient they look at you and they just feel till now your life has not moved you are still trekking and you feel stupid for serving god you feel stupid for walking in pace with god can i tell you there is a name god is called hebrews 11 and verse 6 he is called the rewarder the rewarder not of everybody of them that diligently seek him hallelujah many years ago the lord told me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you honestly i'm not sure i understood the gravity of that statement i don't even talk about myself and share testimonies is 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 it will become a distraction that is unnecessary the most important thing i can tell you is to god be the glory god has carried many people's lifetime lifetime and brought at a platter the things we have seen the things we have heard the things our hands have handled you are not learning cunningly devised fables no I never imagined in my life that I'll be talking with heads of government across nations and to them it will be a privilege for them to talk with Joshua Selman and sometimes when I'm talking I'm saying God look what you can do listen I have seen levels of honor and I tell you with all humility that sometimes it's not it's not very safe to begin to share with people as they rise but I have seen many great things in this life. I can tell you the benefits when you influence people. You've heard some of them. Most times I just repeat testimonies that I've said before so that it does not become a distraction. From one, one giant, one giant real estate company alone, huh? Who entered a covenant with God that everywhere in the world they build an estate they must build a house for me I don't even know how many of them are here now I've not even gone I think just one of them I don't know how many of them I was in a particular nation years ago and when I was done on my way to return back the man of God called me and a group of business people were there and they said listen this is what there is a partnership between that nation and the American government this and that there is an estate we decided to give you five properties from that time till now I've not gone there to check what has happened I don't say these things to brag I hope you get to the point yes. hallelujah a day comes when you yourself you become you don't just give value you are the value yourself one of the blessings that God promised Abraham was I will make your name great you know what it means by the time your name is great many people can leverage on the name and be great too if you are great alone and your name is not great it dies with you that is the tragedy of Africa children cannot use the name and the leverage of those before them to rise when you hear McDonald's today it's a great name anybody can ride on that name and rise but for us here somebody will rise and be great and die and everybody behind him will have to pay the price for all the battles he didn't fight then start from ground up again he said i will make your name great that is influence today the top three religions across the world all came from one man one man all of them from one man hmm. the jews islam Christianity all came one man in fact God willed the whole earth to one man what sort, what sort of thing is that how can God will the earth Abraham become my Abraham and I will be your God your reward is that you will raise sons that will honor me my reward is I give you the earth 
So the Bible says, look unto Abraham, your father, and unto Sarah, your mother that bare thee. He said, for I called him alone and blessed him and increased him. Isaiah 51 from verse 2. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. Influence is not a mistake. A generation will not follow you just because you want them to follow you. And it is not about social media and likes and follows. That can be such deception. We're talking about people who love you to a point that they can die for you. That they love you, they have acknowledged the hand of God upon your life. And they have, they have received you as the face and the voice of God to their generation. Let me show you one scripture and we'll wrap up. My apologies for, have, have I wasted your time? One last scripture and then we'll pray. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Acts chapter 13 and verse 36. Acts 13, 36 and then we'll pray. I'd like us to read it together as loud as you can. You see it projected. Never forget this scripture. In fact, let's read it from Amplified. My dear people, give us your Amplified version and then we'll read and we close. Ready? One, two, read. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation. Stop. Where did he serve? In his own generation. That means purpose and influence is generational. You are not going to serve every generation. When God calls you, he does not just give you an assignment. He gives you an age range of influence from this to this. Listen, the generation of our father in the Lord, Baba Deboye, no matter how anointed I am, even if I raise the dead in front of them, they will love me and say apostle you are such a nice person let me go and listen to our father because he was sent to that generation are we together now the same way there are wonderful young people as much as they love the fathers they will listen to them and say thank you but something in them just says i need every generation is in a pursuit for the voice all the voices that god has lifted may you be one of them that when there is a prophetic roll call, where are the voices apportioned for this generation? Let it not be that your bishopric another will take because of carelessness and insensitivity. This is what is, is at the heart of the intercontinental pastor to see how you can drive people to be relevant. Influence is about communicating the purposes of God as apportioned to your generation. I made up my mind I do not have the intention and the ambition of doing everything for that would be foolish but as far as the context of my generation is concerned that we will shine the light and it will be so bright it will be said that by the privilege of God's grace during our time we were able to do the much that we could do for his majesty this is my drive this is why I wake up this is why I sleep this is why I travel. This is why I do everything that I desire to do. My call for you as I depart your city is that there is a voice of millions that are calling your name and saying we would have been more than this, but some have died because you refuse to rise. Hear me, man of God, only God knows if you had walked with the Holy Spirit and kept in pace with your training, by now you would have stepped into your season of manifestation somebody who died was allocated to your grace for their healing but because you refused to rise they had to go how many more people will die every day because of your carelessness this is the urgency that drives me for every time i refuse to pray i know somebody in a nation or somewhere in this nation will pay the price for that carelessness for every time i refuse to study my incompetence will have a direct effect on somebody's spiritual life there are nations that depend on the truth we communicate for the continuity of their spiritual progress i cannot afford to be careless it's too much of a risk listen ladies and gentlemen we are going to pray your prayer is going to be to cry for grace and say Lord in my lifetime I must represent the purposes of God to my generation open your mouth and from the 
depth of your heart pray i don't know how you are going to cry to god oh but please don't look around cry to the god of heaven Let it be from the depth of your heart. Shabra kapata kosoto balakata. You have taken the time to come here this morning. You have labored in the spirit right from early in the morning. Finish up that investment by putting some energy to your prayer. And David served the purposes of God in his generation. I obtained grace. I obtained grace. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. We are still praying. The Bible says, seeing then that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. It says, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that doth easily beset us. And then it says to run with perseverance the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, it says, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. Who for the joy that was set before him, the Bible says he endured the cross and despise the shame someone is going to pray every weight weights are not necessarily wrong they are just luggages that are unnecessary relative to where god is taking you to lift your voice and cry every weight every distraction could be friends could be activities could be mindsets every weight every weight there is a great destiny there is a great destiny someone pray we're almost done someone pray let it be from the depth of your heart Hallelujah. 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 He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book as it is written of me to do your will. You are going to pray. Father, the portion of relevance and influence you have connected to my life, may I step into it. Lift your voice and pray. The portion of influence, the portion of kingdom relevance allocated unto me. He gave unto one five talent. He gave unto one two, to another one. But he gave everybody something. Pray. Regardless your background, my dear brother, my dear sister, this God is able to lift men. Pray. commanding kingdom influence for the sake of his majesty hallelujah for in Jesus name we pray let me speak over your life now you will be surprised to see what happens to your life after today I'm on my way to better days that will be your song I'm on my way to better days regardless your background you're on your way to better days. You're on your way to better days. Hear me.
ladies and gentlemen please listen the assignment of the prophetic among many other things is to grant you access to the grace that will help you to rise to that place of destiny for you see it is not given to you to honor yourself you can respect yourself but honor is conferred upon you by another I'm looking at people here this morning some of you have come from backgrounds like Nathaniel said about Jesus can anything good come out of Nazareth sincerely speaking there are some of you if we are to be honest to analyze demographically speaking there is no advantage in terms of your earthly connection you will need to outsource help from a dimension that is higher than your background please help those under the anointing because I want to pray something is about to come on you this is my last assignment and then you leave we do not just rise in this kingdom it says thou anointest my head with oil and my cup runneth over he does not anoint the cup but I know what is on your cup by looking I know what is on your head by looking at the result on your cup if your cup is empty don't blame the cup it is because there is nothing on your head the cup is a reflection of what is on your head hear me I am a product of many anointings many anointings I have secured the blessing of many fathers by the privilege of God's grace it is from the abundance of that which we receive that we give he said look on us and the Bible says the man at get beautiful looked at them expecting to receive something and he says such as I have give I unto you there are some of you you may be you may look small and silent it looks like nobody has heard you but there is a prophetic destiny connected to you that you will so shake Portacot River State I'm not just speaking in terms of ministry there are emerging businesses that will rise from this conference there are individuals who will be connected at a global scale my assignment is to release that grace upon you your assignment is to receive in the name of Jesus the son of the living God I stretch my hand upon you I'm releasing this grace the grace that causes nations to hear your voice receive that anointing right now take that grace right now take a take that anointing right now receive that grace receive that grace take that grace now receive that anointing in business in ministry I release that anointing upon you now I release that grace upon you now hear me the Bible says and the king sent for Joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon I don't know who is the help of your destiny but I want to call them by prophecy I speak to River State I speak over the South South everyone mandated by God to hold your hand in this season receive an anointing that attracts them to your life receive an anointing that attracts them to your life help them please receive an anointing that attracts them to your life Esther chapter 2 and verse 15 the Bible says and Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her verse 17 the Bible says she the king loved Esther more than all the virgins Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 and I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass that as ye go ye shall not go empty emptiness has an explanation in the name of Jesus may this grace for favor rest upon you let it rest upon you upon your business upon your family upon your ministry hallelujah hear me there is a grace for visibility neither do men light a lamb and put it under a bushel he told Abraham he said from where thou art lift up your eyes you can look from where you are 
you don't need to go anywhere from where you are your hands may not get there your feet may not get there but your eyes can go there from where thou art he said lift up your eyes and look northwards southwards eastward that everywhere your eyes sees to you I have given us an inheritance I want to pray for the grace to be visionary because you see vision is more than a psychological thing it takes the Spirit of God opening your eyes to see Habakkuk said I will stand upon my watch and set myself upon the tower and I will see what you will say unto me in the name of Jesus may your eyes be open to see hear me Hagar was in the desert and yet there was an oasis in the desert and she could not see but when God opened her eyes she saw an oasis there was a lamb that was near Abraham and yet he did not see it was until God told him there is a lamb and he saw a lamb that had been caught only God knows the opportunities around your life and ministry but until you have the eyes that sees and in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 9 there is an anointing that God gave Paul and he has given it by extension to his holy apostles and prophets it is the grace that makes all men see I decree and declare the miracle of open eyes receive it now receive it now capacity to see into what God is doing in the name of Jesus Christ we're wrapping up give me a minute or two something is happening to you I want to declare restoration and speed listen 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 please look up you see the unit of destiny is time the unit of destiny is time hear me anything that takes your time has taken a portion of your life anything and one way that the devil aborts great destinies is to make you waste time through a mystery called delay you know what delay is delay happens to you when the only thing growing in your life is your age and there are two mysteries that remedy delay number one is called restoration number two is called speed when God wants to help you as far as the matters of destiny is concerned he will allow these twofold mysteries to be at work in your life the mystery of speed and the mystery of restoration time can be restored he said and I will restore the years speed can be given listen when when Jacob and Rebecca connived to act like Esau and they brought the venison for Isaac Isaac said how come you have come so fast you are not supposed to have arrived by this time and he said the Lord had shown me mercy let me pray for someone in the name of Jesus Christ I decree and declare by the power of the Holy Spirit everything that has left you that is not supposed to have left I stand by the mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic receive restoration now receive receive restoration I place it on your head I place it on your ministry I place it on your business I place it on your children in the name of Jesus Christ I declare speed and the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab even down to Israel I pray for you may God take 10 years and put it in one year 10 years help them 10 years in one year I prophesy speed receive that grace I place that anointing upon you 10 years in one year
Alléluia. 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 My last prayer for you. Please listen. You see, we are made by these prophetic words we receive. They are not empty words, believe me. There is a throne in heaven that backs these speakings. Hallelujah. I want to speak finally over your life and release upon you the grace for honor. Look at me. You know what honor is? Honor means to be acknowledged and rewarded to match your true worth. That means it is possible to be perceived less than your true worth. Is that true? When the grace for honor is upon you, it mandates that men acknowledge and reward the hand of God in your life to match the degree of your sacrifice. This is what many people lack in their lives. They do not lack value, they lack honor. He said, because thou hast loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, is that in your Bible? Even my God hath anointed you with an oil of gladness that makes you above your fellows. Joshua was already full of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord instructed him in Deuteronomy. He says, thou shalt take Joshua the son of Nun in whom is the spirit. And thou shalt lay your hands upon him. And then he says, Thou shalt take some of your honor and give unto him, so that the nation of Israel will hearken to him. Please look at me. This generation is too busy, too selfish, and in many cases too wicked to pay indefinite dedicated attention to you, except there is a grace that compels it so. Do not ever think, except you, are, you want balloon success, where you are up today and anything that happens, you are down in shame tomorrow. There is a grace that lifts men and keeps men. But I know whom I believe, he says, and I am persuaded. I'm seeing light come on that woman with black, a black scarf. That woman. Yes. I just saw light, like light coming on her. In the name of Jesus, madam, I don't know what, but the Lord is saying your life is shifting to a new dimension beginning from today. Help her. Honor is a grace. That is the grace that will compel kings. Jesus had that grace even as a baby. That was why the Magi came. Why will the Magi come to greet a baby? What value had he provided at the point where he came? There is a place for value, but you cannot beat what honor does. Even for a baby, at the infancy, kings will start coming. The Magi saw a star, and that star, they followed that star, and when they came, they saw a baby. They were not embarrassed. They bowed before the baby and gave gifts of gold, frankincense, and man this is what i want to pray for you finally my brothers and my sisters let me tell you what honor will give you in one day a lifetime may not be able to give you i know what i'm saying father in the name of your son jesus standing upon the grace of the intercontinental pastor and praying over your precious people here and across the overflows then by extension, the many who are following by way of internet and television in the name that is above all names. As we have received even from the fathers and those that have gone ahead of us from today over your life, your business, your family, your ministry. Honor, let it rest on you now. I say it again, honor, let it rest on you now. Honor, let it rest on you now. Let this mantle drive away shame. Let this mantle drive away reproach. Let this mantle drive away shame. Let this mantle drive away reproach. Hear me. Where you have been forsaken and forgotten, 
so that no man passes through you i call you an eternal excellency a joy of many generations in the name of jesus christ may the lord bless you keep loving jesus keep serving him in truth do not forget the four pillars i have taught you do not forget all the teachings that came before mine and i pray that my god will lift you in jesus name dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it see you on our next video bye pray 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 for your destiny the phase of development lord grant me the discipline